George couldn't wait for his newspapers to be sun-dried. George had promised Bill he'd deliver all these papers. If it didn't get done, Bill could lose his job. Maybe the man with the yellow hat knew where to get dry papers. But George forgot to watch where he was going. Fortunately, he was wearing a helmet. Unfortunately, the bike was not. The walk home was a long one for George. Hi, George. Are you looking for someone to repair that wheel? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, not Leslie. Come on. <laughs> you think you could get George's wheel rolling again? I know I can. <laughs> this. It seemed to be going well, but George felt he should help. A wrench. George knew how to use that. Hey, <laughs> ah! That looks good. Now let's fix these spokes. <laughs> Terrific! Huh? Next, we check balance. Ah. Yeah, looks good. Now the tube. All right. Aha! Uh -huh. Just needs a patch. Is that wrench? <laughs> oh, thank you, George. <laughs> All we need now is some air in the tires. George hadn't helped as much as he wanted to. <laughs> Perhaps one or two minor adjustments. He did, however, know how to use a pump. Ah. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. George rushed home to tell the man with the yellow hat about his paper problem. George, I have a surprise for you. Huh? Oh, George, Bill came by. Apparently, some people didn't get their newspapers today. Yep, one lady saw a duck riding in a newspaper boat, but it wouldn't get out and let her read the headlines. <gasps> Suddenly, George remembered he hadn't told the man with the yellow hat about his paper problem. <laughs> Hey, hold on, George. How about we just buy a few dry papers and deliver them right now? Yeah. And so, George was able to finish his route just like a real paper boy. Maybe I should buy a new bike for myself, too. <laughs> Sorry. George wondered what a rubber band would grow into. 
Or a feather. George was going to grow all kinds of exciting things. The man with the yellow hat hadn't finished his speech. George could grow the rest for him. Blah, blah, dee, blah, blee, dee, blee, blue, blah, blah. This would be the best speech ever. Mm. Hi, jo Have you been just sitting there waiting for me the whole time? Oh. You weren't just sitting there waiting for me the whole time. <laughs> oh. When the man looked like that, it meant George was about to hear a long lecture. So, you see, seeds, nuts, acorns grow. My socks, the radio, the can opener don't grow. Okay, now, we have to dig up all those things you buried. Oh. Oh. George, where's my speech? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to dig up my speech first. <laughs> Unlike Jumpy Squirrel, George didn't know how to find what he wanted. Everything smelled like dirt. <laughs> hey, you dig in a swimming pool? Uh, oh, no, Bill. Uh, George was being a squirrel and buried my speech. We can't find it. Well, I'll help. <gasps> Wait, I know someone who can really help. She's a great digger. No speech here. Oh, digging a pool there, are you? George buried something and we're trying to find it. Well, I've got a metal detector I use to find coins and such down by the lake. Maybe that'll help. Cool. Uh, well, my speech isn't exactly made of... Well, no. Ahoy! <gasps> Maybe it's what you're looking for. No, my speech isn't made of me Ooh! Are they pirate keys? That could be. Maybe to a treasure chest. Uh, no, we're, we're not going to find my speech, and I can't rewrite it in time. I'll just have to skip the tribute. <laughs> George didn't have the talents of a squirrel, but he did have the talents of a monkey, which meant he could see really well. <laughs> you found it! The speech! <laughs> well, that's not made of metal. Ah, so this is the air that inspired that wonderful speech. Are you planting something? <laughs> it's a long story. Oh. That's not a peanut. Looks like something you buried is growing. <laughs> Maybe you are a little bit squirrel after all. I know those knocks. Come on in, guys. 
Wow, what's that? My hobby. Working on complex things relaxes me. Have you ever seen such a beautiful clock, George? <laughs> if you like it now, watch what happens every hour. What do you think? Very impressive. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, George. Oh, we should go. The rocket presentation is starting soon. Are you coming with us, George? Or do you want to stay here and watch the clock? <laughs> Well, if it's okay with Professor Wiseman, it's okay with me. Now, if you want to see the little people play again, move the minute hand once around to 12. <laughs> Have fun. How long does it take to build a clock like that? Oh, about three years. Oh, that reminds me. I'll be right back. George, be a good little monkey. Exactly. George wanted to see the little people again. That looked like George's friend, Compass, the almost homing pigeon. Because when all the other homing pigeons homed in on the statue, they almost made it. It was Compass, all right. George was happy to see his friend the pigeon. And Compass was happy to see his friend the... Well, whatever George was. George wanted Compass to see Professor Wiseman's clock in action. He couldn't fix the minute hand, and that's what made the little people play. He knew they were in there somewhere. <laughs> George remembered there was another way into the clock, the back. When you take something apart, it's a good idea to pay attention to what went where. There you are, Charky. I've been looking for you all morning. Hi, George. Oh, is this your lemonade stand? Are you making much money? Huh? Oh, you have to charge money, George. 
Now George realized what the man with the yellow hat meant. He earned money and bought a ball. <laughs> but if George was having trouble giving it away, how could he get people to pay for it? Hey, did you hear? An iced tea truck sprung a leak at the zoo and the elephants drank it all. I heard it was on its way to the construction site. Now those poor workers have nothing to drink. You know, they must be the hottest, thirstiest people in town. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, it's hot. Get your lemonade fresh from the monkey. <laughs> lemonade? Ugh. Lemonade? Well, thank heaven for monkeys. <laughs> Thanks, monkey. Wow, business is great here. Okay, next four, get your lemonade. This is really good. Thanks, George. Oh, this is some lemonade. Oh, my God. Mm. Uh oh. <laughs> we need to sell the rest of the lemonade to buy a soccer ball, and there's no one left in line. Excuse me, is that lemonade for sale? <laughs> hey, there's some more lemonade. Come on, guys. <laughs> Four more thirsty customers. George only had two more glasses of lemonade. <laughs> Four more, please, George. The monkey's out of lemonade. Where else can we go? <laughs> George remembered how to turn two cups of lemonade into four. Ah! Good job, George. Half the size for half the price. Thanks, George. <sighs> oh, that's one thing. Goodness. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, it's everything I hoped it would be. Mm. The monkey really makes a difference. <laughs> wow, we made a lot of money today, George. We sold every last drop of your lemonade. But it wasn't George's lemonade. Oh. I am really looking forward to coming home and having ice-cold lemonade. <laughs> he had to replace it before the thirsty man with the yellow hat came home. <laughs> George, where did all the lemonade go? Did you take our lemonade out for a walk? <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah, I noticed our soccer ball was flat, so I got a new one. <laughs> it worked. George ran a lemonade stand and got a soccer ball and the man with the yellow hat learned how to make lemonade come out of George's nose. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>